Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, so I know I said that we were done with this, but actually I take that back. Uh, I think there's some cool stuff that we can do that I'm just going to do and I uh, figured I would record so that I can share it with you guys later. Um, because, yeah, I think a lot of the fun part of touch designer, just art in general, is kind of being able to just freely create sometimes. Um, so my goal here, what I'm going to try and figure out how to do is add a spiral or something uh, and kind of force the particles to be moving in a spiral direction. Uh, and I'll do that by leveraging a bunch of the stuff that we already have. So the only thing I changed from last time was adding my resolution as a parameter and adding my camera uh, and particle, camera translate, particle rotate as parameters. Everything else is, is exactly the same as we left off uh, in our last tutorial. So first I'm gonna add some inputs. So I'll add it in here. I'll call that attractor in. I want to have an in position, so I'll call this particle initial position. Um, I will copy that and I will actually just bring it right up to here and I'll just copy that UV. Jump in, uh, do, 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 do. What do I have to do? I have to customize this component. I need to give it a resolution parameter. Uh, I want to take my resolution from our controller, drag that on there and drop it now. I want to make sure that I take this and drag it to my GLSL. Res X, res Y, just parent one. Um, just parent one. Res X. Res Y and just the first parent. And then what else do we need? Still just changing these guys. And why isn't that working? Oh, not zero, just open close. All right, cool. So now we have a baseline UV, we can insert particle initial positions, and we can uh, input a attractor, and then we have our controller. Uh, I am going to remember that I have this op viewer in here, and remember that my parameters are, uh, sorry, the width and height are 450 by 500. Actually, just um, delete this generate a new one so that my new parameters are all in here and that I can get that from my controller. Fixed width, fixed width, 450, 500. Go in here, grab an op viewer comp, uh, alt left bracket for splitting, left and right. Can, oops. Jump in here, grab my background, put that there. Make that operator viewer 450 by, I believe, 250 is what we said. And then children top to bottom. That's not right. Three 
300, this should be then 200. And why isn't this quite working? to do to do okay so actually that is working um, and now we can see that our UI is still working here cool so now that we all have all of that sorted I'm going to actually just get out of this component altogether, bring myself up here to our top level, drop a line stop, point it in the Z direction, give it something like a lot of points, I don't know, 100 points. Use a twist, uh, make that pivot in the Z direction View it, twist it a little bit here so that we can see what's happening. Now, as our primary axis should be z-axis, and then our roll-off, we want to have a little something. What is not working? Ah, there we go. So now we can see that if we appropriately parameterize this, we can get this nice curly Q, spiral looking thing going. And that looks pretty nice as is. So that's a roll off of 0.9 and then a strength of 870 in this case. Now I don't want probably that many points so we can reduce the number of points to something like that maybe 20 that still gives us a nice spiral maybe like 30 um smooth but not not crazy um now what we can do is the good old sop 2 i'm gonna jump in here i'm gonna just copy this Attractors from agents. I'm gonna wire this in. I'm gonna make these not at all connected to anything. Um, jump in, get rid of the shuffle. And then, well, let's just display our forces and see what happens. Particles, display forces. All right, so now we can see what's going on there. Um, I can, what can I do? I can reduce the attractor radius a little bit. I can maybe make the twist strength more so that there's the twists are closer together and make sure that the yeah, radius is kind of somewhere around there. Now, I think... Uh, um, do, 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 do. Yeah, it's actually pretty handy. But I don't want it right now. Uh, okay, so what do we think needs to happen? We can see that we're getting like a little bit of, of something, um, but the particles aren't really behaving exactly how we want them to. I'm going to try and make the forces uh, stronger up top and weaker on the bottom to kind of get that vertical pull going on the particles. So to do that, I'll jump in here make myself some room. And basically, I'm just gonna take this TZ, 
I'm going to drop a math, wire in our force radius, combine chops with multiply, and then I just switch the order of these so that we keep the force radius channel name, and just wire that in instead. And now we have a force radius that's going to be scaled based on our vertical direction, vertical distance, rather. And now I believe maybe if we make the amount a lot stronger, maybe not that much stronger, like a little bit stronger. Okay. So actually, I don't think that was what I wanted. I changed the radius. And I think I should have changed the amount. So now my radius is the same for all of them. But my forces are going to be uh, stronger at the top and weaker on the bottom which we can see here, right? There's a little bit of variation, but yes, for a TZ of zero, our force is going to be not as strong. Um, and that will increase in strength as we go up, which kind of then pulls the particles along <clears throat> the spiral, which I think is pretty cool. Can obviously modulate the forces, the strength quite a bit. For example, if we have the strength at one and a half, we can see there's just slightly starting to get some uh, spiral motion. But if as we increase, we get a much stronger spiral motion here. By increasing our pivot, we can pull the spiral wider. And I believe that if we just increase our attractor radius, it's getting kind of hard to see. We increase our attractor radius and maybe decrease the strength so that we have less uh, space together or more spaced out rather forces. And now we can see this again is working kind of have this spiral effect materializing. And by changing the radius, we want to make sure the radius is going to be big enough so that they overlap a little bit. And the force, uh, we can kind of alter the form of our spiral. Uh, another thing that I might want to do then is maybe copy this initial position. Uh, uh, 1920, 1080. And with our initial position, maybe math, I will bring all of these into a range that is, if we're starting uh, from zero, negative one to one, then I will make that go from negative one to one to negative 0.25 to 0.25, maybe. Um, and then, if I wire that in to our initial positions and restart, now we're all starting the particles kind of in the middle here, much smaller area, and they're just immediately getting sucked up by that spiral, uh, which honestly is starting to look pretty cool. So we can then tweak our camera or rotation. Um, to get a different view. Maybe we can zoom out a little bit so we can see more. Uh, for this, maybe I don't want the post, for example, so we can just 
use the texture 3D feedback. And maybe make our cache size like 35 so we get more trails going and more consistent trail. Um, kind of move our camera up and again get this different different view where the particles are immediately getting sucked up by the spiral. Uh, now, my line only has a height of one, but I mean, I don't think there's any real reason that it would need to stay that way. Um, if we add a null at the end of our twist and then, I don't know, maybe we can insert like a bend uh, oh, the, sorry, it's just another twist, actually. Operation, bend, pivot, like 0.5 or something. Primary axis, Z, and then we can bend. So now here, you can see we're kind of just like bending this a little bit. And as we're bending it, you can see that changing. Quite a bit. Lots of uh, lots of things to play with. When it's looking a little bit funkier, we can give it some more lines or some more points, rather. And yeah, we can start to generate some pretty interesting looking dynamics just from this little simple technique. And every time you do it, you're going to have to change the amounts and, and radius a little bit to get it looking nice with the attractor setup that you have. But as you can see, it's already quite extensible. And I think I like just our normal spiral a little bit more. Looking pretty cool, I think. Uh, so that's it. Just like a simple little idea that I had and wanted to share. But I think there's probably a lot of ways to extend this. Uh, I haven't really thought through it a ton, but in theory, this could be a much longer path. Um, it could be probably quite long and <clears throat> yeah really following any pattern so yeah I guess that's all I have uh, so I'll stop there hopefully this was interesting and another cool way to think about adding some functionality to our system of attractors I will save this file and upload it for patreons and uh as always, thank you, you Patreon supporters. You guys are the best. Until next time, goodbye.